everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Week in Review, a video that we put out every week letting you know all the videos that we put out the past week. So an index of all of them and then we give you short summaries here. You want to hear about the whole thing? All you got to do is click the links in the description below. And with that canned introduction, let's get started. Hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Here's what I reviewed last week. I reviewed Dim Sum Jam, which I rate a 4.5 out of 10. This is a real-time uh, speed cooperative game in which you are trying to serve different tables and uh, complete the game, serve the VIP table, before you get too many complaints. Uh, you get complaints from running out of time, things like that. It's, um... It's okay. It's it's not a terrible game. Hence, it gets a below average grade, but not a you know a bottom of the basement kind of grade. It's also a very uh, one note game. It, it's it one trick pony. It does the one thing it does well. I did not mind playing it. I also would not play this again. Would never recommend it. And uh, you know, if you ever see it somewhere at a convention or something, give it a try. I just don't think it's something to add to anyone's collection. I reviewed with the fellas Small World of Warcraft, which I rate a 7 out of 10. About the same thing I rate Small World. If you are a giant fan of WoW, and you've somehow not gotten or played or are interested, or have been interested, I should say, in Small World, then, uh, yeah, I think you should maybe give this a go. It's well implemented, it's interesting, there's some small differences from the original game that are neat, work well. If you already have Small World and you're a big WoW fan, though, I don't think this is worth the upgrade. You know what I mean? The, the differences are just not uh, so tremendous that you're not going to feel like, well, I kind of just bought Small World again. So there you go. But not bad. I reviewed Kingswood, which I rate a 7.5 out of 10. This is a neat little family-style game in which you're moving characters around a, uh, a set of locations gathering swords and spell books and coins things like that and then attacking monsters at the forest to earn victory points pretty straightforward i wish the game end was not a a number of victory points i don't tend to like games that work that way because you can see the end coming oh so and so has 18 points and when we get to 20 the game's over well you're probably gonna win you know i'm over here at 13. But uh, the game is well finalized. Again, the artwork and the the artwork's good. The theme is a little, oh, just dusty. It's tired. You know what I mean. But the game is good. I enjoyed it. Hence, seven point five. Lastly, I re I reviewed Kowato, which I rate a nine out of ten. I think it's great. It is uh, one of those games, much like Azul, much like Reef, in which you are in a fairly abstracted way, collecting colored bits, attractive, gorgeous colored bits, and then solving little puzzles with them. They, I mean, this game very much fits in that family. It seems like the kind of game that would have come out from Plan B games, or Next Move games. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was thinky, clever, engaging, it's tense, there's some nice turn angst, um, it's very pretty. The coattles themselves, you can articulate them so they kind of, you can kind of move them around on the table. Just a cute gimmick. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, component quality is also great. So there you go. That's it for me, everybody. I'm Z Garcia. See you on the next one. Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delicio, and this week I reviewed two games. First, I reviewed Small World of Warcraft with Roy, Tom, and Z. Small World is not a game that I really particularly loved, and I don't have a lot of connection to the World of Warcraft IP, so this game to me was just okay. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. I also reviewed the first expansion for Tapestry, Plans and Ploys. This is one of those expansions that just adds more of what you already know, so I like Tapestry. I like having more Tapestry. I gave that an 8 out of 10 and a seal of approval. That's it for me this week. Let's keep it going. All right. Woo. For me, first of all, Taco Ninja. I love tacos. Ninja seem cool. The combination is a really bad Yahtzee ripoff. Escape from the Hidden Castle. I thought I would like this one more. Actually, a kids game designed by Wolfgang Kramer, the king of the, one of the kings of designers. But this one is simply roll and move, and my kids didn't find it fun. Chartered, another game that's based on a game from Wolfgang Kramer. This one is a kind of a spinoff of a choir. And at the end of the day, it's okay, but I would much rather play a choir. And this game felt too constrictive and lucky for me.
Elementos is a two-player abstract strategy game. Rock, paper, scissors, fire uh, beats trees, trees beat water, water beats fire, and moving pieces. But it's a little too small and constrained for me to get that excited about. Uh, Zooocracy. This is a game about politics. This is the opposite of the last one. I said it's probably too convoluted. A political game with animals. That's interesting to me and stuff. But it felt like there was a lot going on for just a few victory points. Aftershock. This is a game about uh, fixing up areas. Venice and California after an earthquake has come through. A lot of good ideas in here. Mechanisms and stuff. And I, and I thought it was fine. It just misses it a little bit for me because it just felt a little bit generic, I guess, for lack of better words. There's some interesting ideas in it. Roll It. This is basically four-player Othello. That's all it is uh, with these cool balls, and you would think that it's not that great of a game, and maybe it isn't, but it works really well, and I had a lot of fun playing with my family. Speaking of playing with my family, Last Defense. This is a cooperative game. Speed, 20 minutes long, fighting and save your city from aliens. It's just rolling dice as fast as you can, but we found it to be silly fun. Sovereign Skies, a card manipulation action game. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this one. This is a game that feels like it does a lot with a few pieces. There's a lot going on as you move your spaceship around this rondelle and activate actions and try to score points in various ways. I just found it to be a really neat gripping game. I took a look at Hearthstone, uh, the app for the iPad. I really like Hearthstone. Um, I have a few small problems with it, which I mentioned in the review. But overall, if you're a board gamer, this is certainly a game you can look at. Raiders of Scythia. Raiders of Scythia, which is a sequel to Raiders of the North Sea. Uh, it almost feels like a 1.5 version of that game. In the future, I'll probably compare them. But this one is really well done as you get together raiding parties to go out and conquer. I really liked it. And Small World of Warcraft, we all put this one together. I really enjoy World, Small World. Uh, World of Warcraft I don't really care that much about, but it's neat to see this theme brought in. And they added some tiny small tweaks to this Small World game, but I've always liked Small World a lot and so glad to see it here. Uh, for App Wars, just one game I played this week, the new Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, th there was a top 10 I hear that occurred without me. I continued my 10,000 and below series. Uh, another werewolf game went up. Really interesting one. I think they're all interesting, actually, but this was a lot of fun. And crowd surfing is now on a weekly basis. I do look back once a week where I look at games that I reviewed 1, 5, and 10 years ago. And uh, live Q&A. And a board game breakfast. Stephen Bonacore is on those. And this week, I was not. Mike Delisio took my spot. So a lot of different things. We hope you check them out. More coming this week. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.